Good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Town. My name is Miss Marcia. I am so grateful that you joined me this morning. This month, you guys have been learning that you were made to create. So you've been talking about what? Creativity. And what is creativity? Let me hear you. Using your imagination to do something new. In today's Bible story, you are going to hear about Joseph. You know, the one in which his brothers threw him in a pit and then they pulled him out and sold him as a slave. And then he ended up going to work for Potiphar. That one. You are going to hear about the time that he spent in, hmm, you know what, just watch the video. I want you to see what Joseph went through, but then what happened at the end. It's going to amaze you. All right, so go check this video out and come back and see me in just a little bit. To get it done, don't gotta look too far. Just to get deep and shine like a star. Let's show the world who we can be by using our creativity. Come on. Sometimes it's easy to feel like I've given all I got. Is there anything more? I get down, get stuck, boxed in, locked up. I gotta get moving, moving. Gotta get moving. Yellow is such a happy color. Hey, Green, don't be jealous of how happy yellow is. You're just as awesome. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about creativity. While we take a look at the story of a prisoner who used what God gave him to solve a huge problem. Hello, Red. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, I'm Skylar, and I'm waiting for... Here. I'm here, I'm here, I'm Sebastian. Okay, great. Today, we're talking about creativity, which is using your imagination to do something new. What do you have here? A bag of gold. Actually, corn can come in many colors besides yellow. Black and brown. Red and orange. Green and blue. Even purple and pink. There are many colors, but this corn is yellow. But why have you brought in the corn? Well, I was at the store and they had so much and they were selling it at a really low price and I thought we could use it for today's activity. Or someday. It's just that I also went to the store that was having a sale on something. Food 
coloring. We use a lot of food coloring around here. Right? But they had all seven colors of the rainbow, and I thought we could use those for our activity today. We have a problem. I guess we didn't plan very well. Maybe we could use our imaginations to find a solution. What's something we can make that uses both corn and food coloring? Hmm. Popcorn. Let's, Let's make, make it. it! The first thing we need to do is pop this corn. Whoa! Never saw popcorn pop that fast. Pop your popcorn however you like to do it in your home. Then separate it into containers for each color you want to use. We have seven colors, so we have seven bowls of popcorn. Now we need to mix our colors. The color mix includes sugar, milk, and food coloring. We'll also need some heat. Since we're working with heat, definitely make sure you've got a grown-up to help you make this. Let's mix our colors. First, we need one-third cup of sugar. Mm -hmm. I love sugar. Me too. Maybe a little too much. And we pour it in. Next, you need two tablespoons of milk. One, Ooh. Ooh. and two. Ugh. Finally, we'll need the food coloring. Let's start with purple. Yes, purple. Alrighty. Mix while you add the color. Add as much as you need to make sure you get the color you want. Three to four drops. That purple looks amazing. You want to mix until you can't quite see the sugar granules anymore. It might take two or three minutes. When it's ready, we add the popcorn to the color, two to three cups at a time. And we stir quickly to spread the color around. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. Let's go. You're gonna wanna do more of a folding motion rather than a stirring. Wow, this looks delicious. Can we eat it now? We actually have to wait for the sugar to cool and harden. Okay, speaking of waiting, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in book one of the Old Testament, Genesis. God created this amazing world, but people turned away and broke their relationship with God. But God had a creative plan. God promised to restore people to relationship through Abraham and Sarah's family. One of Abraham's great-great-grandsons was Joseph. God had given Joseph a gift for understanding dreams, but this gift got him into trouble with his brothers. Long story short, they sold him to be enslaved in Egypt. Even worse, Joseph was lied about and thrown into Pharaoh's prison. But God had also given Joseph the gift of wisdom and the ability to lead others. So even though he was in prison, Joseph was placed in charge of all the other prisoners. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Hey, hey Erica. Erica. Joseph must have felt like he had a world of problems on his back, but he was about to face a challenge bigger than being in prison. In fact, this challenge was bigger than the whole country of Egypt, but God had been preparing Joseph for many years. One day, Joseph saw that two of the other prisoners were upset. What's wrong? Are you okay? We both had dreams last night that have left us confused. Yeah, we can't figure them out. Because of his gift from God, Joseph was able to understand what the dreams meant. And everything Joseph told the two men came true. One of the men, the Pharaoh's drink taster, was released from prison just three days later. Before he left, he promised to tell Pharaoh about Joseph but the drink taster forgot. Years went by, yes, years. Joseph continued to serve faithfully in the prison. One day, Pharaoh himself had two dreams that he could not figure out. Can no one tell me what these dreams mean? Pharaoh had asked all the magicians and wise men of Egypt to help him, but none of them could offer an explanation. Oh, great Pharaoh, I've just remembered. Two years ago, you were angry and put me in prison. While I was there, I had a dream. 
And a young Israelite man told me what it meant. Everything he said came true. Guards, bring me this Israelite at once. Joseph was given clean clothes and a haircut and presented to Pharaoh. I've heard you can interpret dreams. I can't do it. My God is the one who knows what dreams mean. Good enough for me. Here is my first dream. I was standing at the edge of the Nile River. Seven healthy cows came out of the water and started to eat. Then seven bony unhealthy cows came out of the water and ate the healthy cows, but stayed just as bony as they were before. Pharaoh also explained the second dream in which the same thing happened with heads of grain. Now, young man, what do you say? God had given Joseph a gift, and Joseph had practiced for many years. He was ready. Both of Pharaoh's dreams mean the same thing. God is showing you the future. The seven healthy cows and heads of grain represent seven years where you will have plenty of food to harvest, more than you'll need. And the seven skinny cows and dried up heads of grain represent seven years of famine and hunger. Then God gave Joseph a creative idea. You should find a man who is wise, understanding, and trustworthy. Put him in charge of all the food in Egypt. During the seven years of plenty, he should gather and store it up. Then during the years when there is very little, you'll have plenty to share. Pharaoh looked at Joseph in amazement. I think you are that man. Your God, who has given you this understanding, will be with you. So, I will make you second in command of all of Egypt. Joseph was given finer robes and even Pharaoh's official ring. He had been enslaved or in prison for more than 10 years. Yet now, he was the second most important person in the whole land. During the next seven years, Joseph traveled all over, making sure grain was stored up. Huge amounts of grain. So much grain, they couldn't even count it. Then, the famine came. No one could find enough to eat in Egypt or the lands beyond. People came from everywhere to beg Pharaoh for food and he sent them to Joseph, who provided what each family needed to live. Even Joseph's own family came from Canaan in search of food. And in the end, the creativity God gave Joseph helped save Joseph's family from starvation too. The end. So was this a brand new way of storing food that Joseph invented? Well, the Egyptians have never needed to store up this much food for so long. I mean, I can't imagine where I want to put all my popcorn for the next seven years, along with all the other food. So, what's, what's our part, part in the story? You may never be imprisoned unfairly or asked to appear before a king, but we all encounter problems to solve in our daily lives. Some can seem smallish and some can seem really big. Like if I have a disagreement with one of my friends on how to play a game. You can use the creativity God's placed inside you to figure out a new way to play together. I feel like I'm not always that good at that kind of problem solving. Well, remember that God has always been in the business of problem solving. Even when we turned away, God sent Jesus to restore our relationship with God. We're each made in God's image, so we can reflect that problem-solving creativity. But it does take practice. Joseph had to practice his gifts for years before he found himself in front of Pharaoh. So what if I don't know what my gifts are? Well, you can use your imagination to help you figure this out. Uh, think of things you do that seem to make others happy. Maybe writing a story or planning a party. I like making snacks for my friends. I like helping people organize things. Sounds like you're on the right path. See you next time. Bye. Bye, Bye Erica. Erica. So here's the thing. You can use what God gave you to solve problems. Just like Joseph did. Just like we used our imagination for rainbow, rainbow popcorn. Do you think we should eat it all now or save some for later? We should definitely save some for later. Or you're going to need a creative solution for a tummy ache. Yum. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time.
Let's go. Yes, yes. First time. Joseph was amazing. Although he was stuck in prison and was forgotten about by the butler, he didn't let that stop him from using the gift that God gave him. He actually came up with a strategy to help Pharaoh prepare for the years of famine that were going to come. 
How amazing is that? And we can learn from Joseph. Whenever we're in a tough situation, we can still use what God has given us to solve problems. And when we solve problems, guess what? We're doing a good work. And that brings us to our memory verse. And our memory verse comes from Ephesians 2 and 10. And it reads, we are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. And again, that comes from Ephesians 2 and 10. And let's read it one more time, okay? We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. So that's our memory. And I want you to continue to practice that, all right? And live it out. Before you leave me today, I want to give someone an opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. And it's so important. Yes, we should learn about Jesus. Absolutely. But what's most important when we learn about Jesus, we should make that decision to ask him into our heart. Because that's where he wants to be. So if you're one who never asked Jesus into your heart, I want you to repeat after me. Okay? Father God, I thank you for Jesus. I believe he's your son. And he died on the cross just for me. And that you raised him from the dead on the third day. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and live in me forever. On this day, I say, you are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Ta-da! Now, Jesus lives in your heart. You are in the family of God. And now, you are well equipped to do those good works. Thank you so much for joining me Come back next Sunday at what time? Nine o'clock. All right? Have a wonderful week. And until next time.